So, you bought yourself a shiny new stainless steel fermenter. Let's talk about how and why to passivate it. I'm Dr. Hans and this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. Today I thought we we're going to talk about how and why to passivate your stainless steel. If it's a fermenter, it's a brewing equipment or any other stainless steel equipment. I will try to explain it quite simple and also we're going to talk about how to maintain your vessel and equipment. And this fermenter by the way is brand new. I got this sent to me for doing a review from Banggood. If you're interested in this fermenter already, I will put a link down below in the description. So you will see this fermenter in upcoming videos. I'm gonna do a review video of it, because that I promised to do. And uh, I will do some modifications of it. But if you're interested, in, this comes in very different sizes. You will find links down below to it. And of course, subscribe to the channel so you can follow my adventure with this fermenter. So, before I could start using it, I want to uh, passivate it. And why do we want to passivate our equipment? Stainless steel ain't 100% stainless. Stainless steel is an alloy of iron and chromium. And we want to passivate it to keep it stainless. And that alloy blend comes from like just over 10% to about 30% a different quality of stainless steel. So I'm guessing for such a big vessel it's more than 10% range and where specialized equipment comes up in the 30% range. You more the, the merrier. But to get this as most stainless as possible, we need to passivate it. And we passivate it through oxidization and we can do that rapidly, like we're going to do here today, or we can do it just leaving it outside for weeks, not outside, but in the air for weeks, and that will passivate it. What happens when we passivate it is that free irons get lost and we will form like a surface of chromium oxide from that oxidization process. And that surface of chromium oxide will be protecting the stainless steel. And it will also make better beer because if your stainless steel is not passivated, it can give some off flavors in your beer, like mineral tasting off flavors. And passivate it ain't that hard. I'm gonna passivate a lot of equipment today. Aren't the equipment already passivated when, it, when you buy it? It should be. It should be the, the last step in the manufacturing process. But if there was like any oil on there from the manufacturing process and uh, if, yeah, there's any dirt on there, yeah. And of course you can't be sure if it's a no-name brand, something like that. And it's just a great insurance to do it the first time. And uh, you need, may need to have to do it all over the, the lifespan of your products. We're gonna get into that later in the video when it's time to do this again. And uh, yeah, how to best maintain your uh, stainless steel in the brewing equipment. This fermenter is 36 liters, so I'm going to start with this one. And also in this one we're going to put some different equipment. And uh, I have my brewing system and my sparge water heater. So we'll do everything so we will get most, most out of the solution that we're going to mix up. So we're going to rapidly oxidize this with uh, using acid. You can use nitric acid, which I can't get a hold of, and you could use star sand. If you want to use star sand, you want to mix it at a four times stronger blend than you do for sanitizing. I'm today going to use 
citric acid. This is food grade. This is the same you can buy in little bags at the supermarket. You can also buy this in bulk. It's cheap. It's the same you run through your coffee machine and uh, yeah, used for baking and other stuff. And with citric acid, you will use a mixture about four to 10%. So I'm gonna aim in the middle there, going about 7%. I've cleaned all the equipment today, which I'm gonna passivate. And uh, I will try to link down below to everything I use. This video, so you can go to my Amazon storefront there also. I have a lot of the stuff I use and recommend. Instead of measuring up, I know this is five kilos. So just tearing the scale and uh, pour 2,500 grams into this one. Aim for a four to 10%. This might be overkill doing 7%, but I'm thinking I can always dilute it later on if I need to for some reason. Okay, that's it. And now I have the rest for another time. And uh, yeah, you can also use this solution for other stuff so you can keep it. Taking away limestone. This is hot water from the tap. I have some water heating up also. I won't stick my hand in here. Yes, I, I know I'm covered using gloves. That was very easy dissolved. I get some more water. Everything is dissolved. Okay, we're filled up to the to the rim. Give it a small stir. And now we will leave it for 30 minutes. Back in a flash. Okay, 30 minutes are up. This is done, but not really. Now comes a very important step. So listen carefully now. Don't rinse it. You would have to leave this to, to air dry. And now we can start passivate everything else. Woo. The best way would have been to like sink everything down into a bath. I don't have a way to do that and most of us don't have. I have a big bathtub. Yeah. But you can't sink like this. Anyway, but of course you could have synced down the fermenter and lots of other equipment. In here I have the, the grain pipe, I have the, the system I used to lower that in a slow pace. That was not a good word, I know. Uh, I have the cooling coil and uh, yeah you can fit some other stuff in there as well strategically going through on the biggest to this one sent to the other one and uh, lost we're gonna end up with that I should be able to just yeah that's what I was talking about, if I needed to dilute this, it was better going on the high end to start with. I need some more water in here. 
course this has cooled down a bit but now when it gets into one of these pots I can heat up the solution a bit more and in here we could sink down some other equipment maybe I won't heat this up in this one because I've been spilling a lot and these are parts to the uh, fermenter this will sit for 30 minutes back in a flash Pfft, what if there was lightning here and so So far I have passivated the fermenter and now the lid goes in here. I have passivated uh, the, uh, my brewing system and uh, down here off camera I'm passivating the sparse water heat heater and in here I have some other stuff as well. Some brewing spoons and uh, yeah. Don't waste it. And when I'm done with all the passivating, I'm also gonna like heat it up and throw it down the kitchen sink to uh, get rid of some limestone buildup I have. Because yeah, I have really hot water for my own well. <sighs> Cheers. Now, the important step here is don't rinse it. Just leave it to air dry and uh, let's say 24 hours or maybe until the next time you want to brew with equipment someone calling the uh, layer of chromium oxide that you just created by passivating your equipment can be hurt by for example using uh, chloride bleach PBW, uh, something like that, won't hurt it, but if you're using bleach or, or chloride-based cleaning agency, that will hurt it and we, you will have to do this again. If you're using like a steel wool, something like that, to clean your fermenter equipment, yet again, you will hurt that layer of chromium oxide and exposing the iron to the, the beer or wort you'll have to review it. I have no exact answer on how often to do this because it depends but if you're doing like all your equipment why don't at least do this once a year because if you take care of your stainless fermenter they will last you a lifetime. Link to the fermenter down below and I will try to link to the most of the stuff I used here today and as I said earlier you also have my Amazon storefront. Uh, and yeah, don't, why don't you check out my webpage also? If you sign up to my mailing list there, you will get my free ebook with three of my top recipes. And if you're into recipes, maybe even my patron site would be interesting for you because my patrons get to dig into the big Dr. Hans recipe book where I from now also try to upload beer XMLs. And I'm working on the old recipes also. So, that's kind of cool but yeah I hope this explained why and how to passivate your equipment if you learned anything here and this was helpful please share this video give this video a thumbs up if you aren't already consider becoming a subscriber and yeah of course thanks for watching Dr. Hans out <laughs>